ladies and gentlemen. Continuing our evening of magic, the Royal Luxor is proud to present the Illusionist. And now for the review of the best film from 2010 that no one has seen. <laughs> hey, it, it, <laughs> it, it has to be available for you to see it, to see it. Yeah, no, this is very true. And sure enough, I mean, it came out in Austin eventually. Eventually. I mean, I, mean, I saw it at, at the screen they had, yeah. which it was only me and five of the people there. Yeah, I mean, even you'd think a film, this is by the director of The, the Triplets of Belleville, which was nominated for Best Foreign, or, or Best Animated Film when it came out. Yeah. A lot of people said it should have won. I, I'm not going to offer opinion one way or the other on that because I... You know, of course, Pixar won that year. I don't even have to check. Well, look, yeah. I, I, I thought <laughs> you know, I thought Edward Norton did a good job in it, yeah. but I didn't think it was all that no, no, great. No, I, no, no, I, I not that one. It. Not that but, one. What are you talking about? No, no, no. The, this is the illusionist, the French animated. Film. <laughs> the French, the French make films still. Give a shit about that. <laughs> well, they do it from like a shelter somewhere where you can't find them. <laughs> do they? Well, look at them scooch. <laughs> well, the, the one with Edward Norton was about a master magician, mm-hmm. whereas this one is about a broken down illusionist who's at the pretty much the tail end of his career. And he was never even that good at the height of his career. You know, it's a, it's not so much that he's bad, but he was a uh, what, what do you say? He's like a, a, a like the kind of guy who comes on in a burlesque show. He's yeah, a, yeah, he's very good in his niche. Mm-hmm. Well, but see, he's not a guy who headlines. Well, Cyrus, I, I mean, I got the impression watching it all through the film that even like at a, at a time like this is clearly like like the kind of magic he does, the kind of act he has, that low level. It's on its way out. The Beatles have come. Yes. Yeah. The, you know, rock and roll is starting to hit. That's 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 becoming a thing. Well, I agree so with you. so the little vaudeville comedians and and vaudeville acts are on their way out. But I got the impression that even when he was at the best of his game, mm-hmm. he was still low level. No, I, I actually. Uh... I actually saw this, and yeah, that's the impression I got to where, yeah, it's like the end of an era for certain entertainers yeah. who are pretty much, yeah, getting the boot by, I mean, rock and roll. And basically, they're the ones yeah. who are taking over the stage now, especially in France, out of all places. But, uh, yeah, yeah, the, that, that was kind of one of the charming things about uh, that I liked about this film. Even though I think uh, Justin Bieber is bringing it back, right? Doesn't he have, like... <laughs> A, a magic show before his uh, well, before his big concert. Well, he's now. got a bunch of acrobatic ninjas on stage with him. Oh, even better. <laughs> he yeah. is the new Kurt Cobain. <laughs> self would, self-spoken. Would they happen to be in a half shell? Those uh, ninjas you're talking about? Practically, <laughs> if, if only. Uh, I know that, 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 that I would, would change see. it. <laughs> show me that in three D. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I, I I think maybe you misunderstood me. I agree with you completely, Leon. That this is this guy. It's not that he's a great magician, but in the niche that he's found for himself. He's just fine. He's not incompetent. He, he found a way to make a living at it. Yeah, yeah he not, he had a routine of yeah. traveling. He, you know, he had his set bunny, his set poster. He'd get out there. He'd do some mild entertaining. He he'd be filler. He'd be like, yeah. you'd go to see your main act, and it'd probably be eight act, eight opening acts, and he was one of them. Yeah, I, I, I would have loved to seen like cameos of like the Three Stooges or like sure. you know, Lauren Hardy because watching this, it just made made me think, wow, how come nobody's made a film about that era of like that vaudeville type era where I think that would be interesting to see it kind of you know exit its way out uh, of like as far as just entertainment for America be careful what you wish for these are the French they would have made it about Jerry Lewis Uh, that I would see but but this this, this is that little bit past that where we're just watching him kind of on his last leg and Mm -hmm. it's the kind of thing where you know what I I got the impression this guy might have just like given it up just realized like it's over but at a at a small gig, this completely drunk guy who's so drunk he cracked my ass up. Scottish as all get out. Honestly, I've had like eight regulars when I used to bartend that I was like, that's them. That's a guy. He's like, exactly. Them. Aside from wearing the kilt, which you can't really do in Austin this much. Right. I mean, yeah, but every, in every other way, that was yeah. them. Isn't that Bo? Yeah, yeah it is yeah. Bo. On, on, on the odd night, it is Bo. Yeah. Yeah. But, oh, 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 before we go on, I have to tell people that, you know, if, if you plan on going to see this, be prepared uh, because there's absolutely no dialogue. Uh, oh, 
Oh, it's, it, it, oh, that's it, true. That's true. Throughout, right. this, whole, throughout it, this whole film, it, except there's moments of like gibberish with a little bit. No, there of, is. Uh, there, it's real uh, languages. It, it's, it's English, yeah. Fra- uh, English French, French, and German. Yeah, there's, but, but there's not much. But yeah. there's not much, and honestly, even like theatrically, there's no subtitles because right. you there's no you way don't need you it. Need them. it's the kind of thing where like if you're somebody who's like, oh, I hate I hate reading the screen. I don't like subtitles. Don't worry, they aren't any, and no. you don't even need them. You get it. Yeah. You can't not get it. But, uh, yeah, he gets invited by this drunk guy who seems to be the only person in it, enjoying his show at one point, invited to his little Irish village to come entertain. Scottish village. Is it Scott? Oh, yes, yeah, right. Scottish village mm-hmm. to entertain people at his pub. And, hey, they're all a bunch of drunks. They love him. They think it's great. Yeah, they're into it. Yeah, they're into it. It's probably, like, the best audience this guy has had in a long time. We gotta but go keep there in mind, we're sometime. Yeah. <laughs> Spill.com and all of it. We're That's talking true. about, like, like such a small pub, you expect the Boondock Saints to be hanging. I know, exactly. <laughs> just, like, <laughs> tiny little pub. And, and out of it, there's, there's one little girl that kind of touches his heart because she believes in him as a magician. Yeah. And she's got no shoes. They're falling apart. He's like, she is a waif. Totally. Encyclopedia pictures. Yeah, see, works. she cleans his room, cleans his clothes. Bones. He's like, you know what? Let me do something nice for her. And just like magically, you know, quote unquote, magically produce his shoes. Yeah. And that's enough for her to just like give up her life as a scullery maid and tag along with him. <laughs> Stalk the guy, you mean? <laughs> well, yeah. but, but it's, you know what? It's this, this so reminded me of a lot of foreign films I watched back in the 90s that were this slice of life that were bitter, sweet. They were sad, but they had this, this, this tenderness to them. And it's about how this little girl energizes him into like believing in himself again and getting on with his career and maybe stick it out a little bit longer because she thinks it's real magic and anytime he can produce something that she thinks is magic it kind of warms his heart yet it's also a coming of age story it's really about sort of losing your illusions about such things as as going from childhood to adulthood and 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 the acceptance of someone who is a, a much older adult of looking and being able to see that and go you know this is this is life this is the progression of life this is what's supposed to happen as sad as it might be to me, it's kind of where I am right now. Yeah. Every time I drive by, like, you know, the college locally, I'm like... Just like <laughs> <laughs> See, I was, I've seen I'm, pornos based on the subject matter, well, but this one was more heartfelt and well, you know, a the, little the, bit more sincere. The, 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 like, the mented mind, in other words, co-host, watching this film, might see this and go, when is the old guy going to totally try and tag this chick? And the thing is, is, like, the French are like, of course he's not going to try and tag this chick. That's he's against like, the law. Yeah, he's like, yeah, she's only like, 12. It's not like she's 13. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, it wasn't made in West Virginia. <laughs> he's he's like looks like maybe he's sixty or so yeah. in his mid sixties yeah. or something, and she's just a, a who knows how old. Like she's living in Scotland, she could be twenty four for all we know. There, well, there, there is that feeling like like in her head she's younger than she actually is. Yeah, she's very, she was like in her teens or something. Yeah, she's yeah, very yeah. innocent, yeah. And, and that's you know there's always almost that that father daughter relationship, and and that's kind of what spurs him on. But in the midst of him going out and getting these other gigs. Um, you know, he, he he falls in with another, another crew of people, uh, a ventriloquist, and uh, and somebody else. <laughs> the, 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 the acrobats. The, yeah, the, the, you got the acrobats, acrobats you got yeah. the ventriloquist, and the comedian. And, and you know, yeah, and it's it's like it works for a while. It's like, hey, you know what? We have this camaraderie, and I'm taking care of her, and Uh-oh. it's all going, yeah. You said uh, for a while. For a while, because Uh-oh. because old reality <laughs> has a way of stepping into things. Kicking you in the face. And... and it's it's funny how how slow the decline is. It's almost like they were buoyed by this sense of whatever this girl brought to get everybody like energized. But you know what? The, the truth is what it is. Yeah. And yeah. The, the 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 time for these guys is just over. Yeah. You know, it, this is that rare film that I go. It's probably perfect, but I left it feeling a sense of like disappointment really you know personally i go wow you, you you did everything right within the context of what you wanted to do and yet at the end i was like well that's not what i was hoping for at all you know what uh, because it is a downer of an ending i i gotta say like the ending like I, as much as i was digging it i was probably starting to lose a little steam almost toward the end mm-hmm. or like you know okay this is this is sad and where it's going and what happens at the very end, the, st- the last statement that he makes made me turn around and go like, I almost pumped my fist like, wow, that's, r- that's right, dude. You summed it all up right there. I mean, this is something that needed to be said, e- even though it's, it- the message seemed to not be getting out there. Yeah. And he just finally just wrote it down. It's like, there you go. Yeah. And that's, uh, well, I-, I like that part of it. But uh, Cyrus is right. I mean, watching this movie, 
throughout the whole thing, I was like, okay, this is cool. It's taking me back to like something like American Pop. Yes, but, American Pop. You're uh, right. But at the same time, just like that movie, it felt like, okay, at the end of the day, what does this all add up to besides, yeah, things suck. <laughs> yeah, things, <laughs> you know, life just sucks, you know. Yes. But uh, but it was still, you know, for what it was, I, I was I was actually more amazed at the animation. And, oh yes, and uh, just taken back by that. It's and gorgeous. J- j- just to be happy that somebody is still doing this type of animation, yeah. like Ralph somebody Bashi still believes in, in two D yeah. animation. So much yeah. detail. Oh, oh yeah, God. Easily. Yeah, and Everything. that and that's the part that you you either fall in love with it at that point because if you're not all that invested in what's going on in the story, it, it will lose you after a while. You you'll just be like okay what is this all adding up to what's going on let's you know you, you in this day and age of this all these audience out here I, I i you know this belongs in an out art house that i mean true good look if you i mean one it's house, but, you're not wrong town, it's art house cinema but it didn't lose me at all i was mm-hmm. I'm magnetized by this film I mean, i was stuck to it like wow this is really interesting stuff and partially because of the animation because it really is that great i will say though i do have a default there a problem with it that i did not have with triplets of elville which mm-hmm. is that towards the end and they try and insert some CG into it, yeah. and it's really blatant, and it's mm. really obvious, and it's kind of ugly when it happens. Sure. And I was like, wow, that's jarring, and not in a way that feels like like it's jarring intentionally for the plot or something, you know? It's like, it fits in the story to be jarring. It just feels like they ran out of money or something and just said, well, let's do a really cheap CG insert here. Hey. Uh, it's only in the last ten minutes or so that that starts happening. Yeah. Uh, there's a sequence with, like, a, a, a pullout where it shows the whole city, which is neat, that it's like, wow, this is what the city of Edmund... Oh, was it Edmonton? I can't remember. Some... Uh, it was someplace in Scotland. I, I don't even know the name. I'm so American. I don't even know. But uh, where it does this whole 360 run around the whole city. And it's like this feels like they actually mapped out how this city really looked in detail to yeah. show you what it was. But even so, it's the first moment in the film that you go, this isn't hand drawn animation. At, at, and I don't know what is doing here. And then there's a sequence later on with a train in the middle of hand drawn animation that was baffling me as to why it was CG. Mm-hmm. So why did you? I don't understand. There's no reason uh, for this to be style CG. choice, I guess. <laughs> yeah. or, or, may, or maybe they yeah. did. You know, may, maybe it was supposed to be more rotoscope, and they ran out of time. Yeah, or, maybe and or so. money. But you know, it didn't. It didn't, it, it didn't yeah, bother me. I didn't even remember yeah. until you just brought them yeah, up. To no, be honestly, honest. I didn't even think it, about it. It, yeah. it did. It, dropped, it, it did bother me. But you know what? You're, you're rightly on. Once again, like I said, this is probably a perfect film in the sense that you know they achieved exactly what they wanted to. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that in and of itself. And, and you said it as well. He leaves a note for her at one point that really sums up the message of this film and while this is exactly in some ways a message I think people probably need to understand (laughs) I was not ready for it to happen in this film you know it's like I mean Uh, it's funny because I was thinking of the uh, the actual Edward uh, Norton film The Illusionist which as opposed to uh, the film it's always compared with uh, the uh, Christopher Nolan film The Prestige it says right from the get go it's like look there is no such thing as magic it's all illusion I mean it's it's all uh, it's a con game Uh, sure spoiler alert you know, yeah. well, no, they start the illusionist note. You know that from the get go. You, know, you did two general. from the prestige, except they <laughs> were like, we ran out of ideas, so we're just going to make it actual. I, I, I didn't think. I, I thought, I thought, I thought <laughs> they just broke what, 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 that they had. They like, hey, let's let's take it this further. Whereas with that illusionist, I was like, well, they told me it was a con to begin with, so I'm not fooled by any of it. Yeah, no, see, but I I loved it because it was a fairy tale set within the parameters that they started with, and I thought in the same sense, this is that way as well. And yet, there's so much whimsy that you almost want it to ter- turn magical. You know, it's disappointing uh, when uh, it's a honestly, world... I, honestly, it's like mm-hmm. the, the reality, there's that point in the film where reality comes crashing down bit by bit and does not let up. And I, I, it it would have turned... To it, it, if it had had that magical ending you're talking about, I would have called bullshit. It, it would have been too forced, especially, yeah, I mean, halfway through the film, it pretty much tells you exactly what it is what you're getting into. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think some people are going to be screaming. I hope some Akira type shit happens during this movie because other than that, I'm not really enjoying it all that. T- <laughs> Suddenly, a bunch of spikes grow. Yeah, out well, of you know, as far as like yeah. as far as like the typical American type audience watching something like this, I mean, I, I could see a lot of people turning it off. But like I said, if you're you know if you're more 
Artsy than fartsy. I mean, I think I think you're gonna really dig that. Yeah, I, artsy co- than fartsy. You know, co- co- I love that. <laughs> I, I, I have to agree with you. I mean, I'm not being like the typical American who wants to see explosions and all, mm-hmm. but it is a it's a it's a small story. It's a small movie that could have used more explosions. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, like the triplets of Belleville really had a lot of stuff going on. Like especially when you get to the end, there's a there's a big action sequence. There's a, there's a lot of stuff. It's much more surreal. Yes, and much more active. And this movie is not that. And it no. it, 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 it achieves everything it's going for absolutely absolutely it's just not going for anything big and it's the kind of thing where you're like well i don't know how how to i'm not sure how to how to grade you i mean you you did what you did exactly what you wanted to do but maybe you could have wanted more yeah it's a quiet human story and honestly something i thought about this movie i love the animation oh yeah but it could just as easily have been a a live action movie yeah there's nothing in it that that screams it has to be animated it's almost like they just went we don't actually know any good illusionists so we might as well just animate it yeah (laughs) yeah uh you know what um i'm gonna move right to the review here sure and i'm this set, like I said, I'm so split on this film because there's no question to me that this is an excellent film. It's very well made, but I have to rate it on some level on my personal visceral reaction to it. And uh, it was it was hurt by some elements of it. It was hurt by the fact that they inserted some CG in it. It was hurt by the fact that I thought, even though it's I approve of its message, it got almost too dark at the end. It was like you didn't get quite that that depressing, uh, at least for my tastes. I, I'm going to give it a very high matinee. Like, like a, you really should see it, but at the same time, don't like freak well, out. Well, the, the, the CG didn't bother me. And I like the, the, the darkness of it. I think it, you know, it holds the nose of the audience and, and makes them take a spoonful of medicine that they need. It, you know, I, I love that message, but at the same time, I also give it a super high matinee. It is not, it, it's not Toy Story three. For anybody who's going no. like, oh, I thought this was better than Toy Story. No, no, you're you're, you're, you're you're absolutely wrong. And, you know, it, it's it's a quiet film that does exactly what it sets out to do, but it's not aiming terribly high. But at the same time, I'm so glad I saw it and I could easily watch it again. Wow, I love to meet that asshole who says this is no Toy Story three. <laughs> yeah, they'll be in the, they'll be in the comment section. The people going like, this should this should win. Yeah, <laughs> not that piece of crap Toy Story three. <laughs> well, you got a paintbrush up your ass. I'm sure that this is the film for you. But uh, yeah, I mean, as far as what it is, uh, I, I I can appreciate it. Uh, nothing I would like highly recommend to just you know any of my friends. I mean, just if if, if you're into art and you appreciate classic animation. This is right up your alley. I think you'll dig it regardless of the story. Um, but then again, the, the story is a nice touch of humanity. Uh, I, I kind of lump this in with like movies like Watership Down in a way. <laughs> oh, just, just the feeling as far as like the feeling you get after kind of watching it. That's you a know, good comparison. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm still glad. I'm glad, you know, hey, I, I give it up to the French for fucking still making 2D animation like this. Thank God somebody's out, somebody out there is doing it because you forget just like – how i mean the power it just, of it. yeah yeah exactly it, it just ha- how like deep you can really get with with a decent story uh and seeing it in, in a theater i can only imagine uh how more it probably would have hit but uh, 2d it was feels good. like i'm watching a moving uh painting or illustration much more so than 3d can mm-hmm. is capable right. of being yeah so. you know yeah I, i've gotten so i've gotten so used to 3d now it, it don't when i look at it it doesn't really wow me anymore. exactly uh like uh a lot just of by D's being you, 3d yeah. yeah exactly so uh but you know hey I, i'm giving it a full-on matinee so yeah just a straight up. matinee yeah a strong but I normal yeah. matinee. <laughs> you know i try to as far as our rating systems i'm sure i've said this before we have these specific ratings where it's like rental matinee full price you know better than sex i always i try not to confuse myself with this high matinee <laughs> low matinee kind of in the middle but not really quite there but i've always said i'd that- spend a Two more bucks if it was in 3D. I, I, just the, I think the reason I do that is because I think a 10-point rating system makes much more sense than a 4-point yeah. one. Yeah. And so I go, you know what? That's why I do that. Because I go, "There's the, really? You're going to quantify to 4 points? Yeah. That's getting a little silly. You know, fuck them. Fuck the audience. I'll let them think. I'll, I'll let them think with <laughs> hey, them. You, you heard what yeah. we had to say. Yeah. <laughs> Watch me pull a rabbit out of my ass, motherfucker. Yeah. That's that right. never hey, works. Watch this rating come right out of my ass. <laughs> I was going to say, the, the, my favorite part of this whole film was that rabbit, though. Oh, oh that, yeah. that, that 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 feral rabbit rascal, that went to oh, bite yeah. everybody. A rabbit. I love that rabbit. I was like, you know what? That rabbit. He gets my cat in. Dude, right there. if if I had been the illusionist, that rabbit would have been Hassan <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
I have to tell you what, though, man. The one scene that really got me, and it's just one shot, is that ventriloquist dummy in the window in the, shop. In the pawn oh, shop. Man. Oh, I know. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it, it knocks the legs out from under you. <laughs> it really does, like a punch in the balls. I'm like, oh, no! <laughs> Magic po, po. is dead, go <laughs> yeah. It's no. dead. Harry Potter is working in a McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> and so Gandalf should, is yeah. at the pawn shop. <laughs> and so he uses should. spells to make special <laughs> sauce. <laughs> that goddamn lazy kid <laughs> running around doing magic. Shouldn't he be working? <laughs> Voldemort won, not realizing the result was no magic for anybody. <laughs> you have to get real jobs, and that goes for all of you listening to this podcast. <laughs> get working, lazy. <laughs> 